Modern knives are all the same and I hate it. Let's talk about it. All right guys, so today I wanted to make a video and ultimately this is kind of an expansion upon um, a video that I did not so long ago about five EDC trends that I think should end. And in that video, one of the points was the fact of modern folders being predominantly, like invasively, titanium frame locks whether they are traditional folders like these guys or flippers like these guys there is a flood or a sickening glut of titanium folders out on the market and i think ultimately the part that i dislike the most about this is anytime there's a new knife maker or a company that wants to dabble in high-end knives there's this immediate thought that you need to have a titanium frame lock or the titanium frame locks equal high end and you'll see this all over the place now luckily i will say i do think um, going into this conversation that we are seeing a change of things with people like andrew demko and the uh, what is it shark lock i believe it is could be totally butchering that one but he has a specialized lock that is essentially a um, kind of branch off of the triad lock and of course we do see other companies out there experimenting with new things but I think the biggest or, or most unfortunate thing is the fact that we have this condition in the knife community or the EDC community to expect that a high-end knife you know a knife over $200 or more you know has to be a titanium frame lock folder or like I said flipper in some cases when realistically like it really does not have to be this way and in fact moreover um, you know companies like Spyderco themselves have actually pioneered um, with different knife um, models like the Sage, the Native, um, and all these different ones like the Chaparral. They've really shown that there are a number of different um, locking mechanisms out there, even things like the Spyderco Manix, um, the Shaman, you know, the Paramilitary 2 itself, you know, there have been a number of Spydercos, I think most especially Spyderco has been the most, um, they've tried the most different types of locking mechanisms, but they really do show that, you know, there are things like the compression lock that work really well, the ball lock um, that work really well, and even lock backs in different uh, variances of the lock back do work really well for EDC applications. <clears throat> However, like I said, um, Spyderco, which is ironic that there is a Spyderco here, but for the most part, Spyderco is really one of the only companies that has genuinely took to the task of trying other locks. And a lot of these locks, like the ball lock from the Manix 2, are not entirely um, new locks or entirely Spyderco things. And I will say, in fairness, the compression lock is kind of a Spyderco staple, but you know, ultimately there are other locking mechanisms out there that work and work very well. Now I will say, you know, some may argue that, you know, these titanium frame locks at folders, you know, are all a little bit different because some of them have, you know, lock bar inserts or over travel stops like this guy. Some of them like the Incosi actually use the um, detent ball as the bearing surface for the lock. So, you know, there's that. And then of course, you know, others have hardened steel inserts for their lock interface so of course not all of them are as classic as your traditional titanium lock bar interfacing with the steel of the knife like this Benchmade um, skirmish um, but at the same time too like I said it, it is kind of disheartening to see that you know if you want a high-end knife whether it's that you want the blade material that it's made out of the certain type of pivot mechanism or even just the style like I really like these hinders uh, their style their blade shape um, their performance is really nice but at the same time too I think it kind of comes with this dual um, downside that you know you are locked into having a titanium frame lock and while i don't necessarily think that titanium frame locks are you know the end of the world or that we should just get rid of them they do they are good performing uh knives i just think that you know at the end of the day when you look at all these knives especially you know when i flip them all over and we're showing the uh, lock side on all of them like these knives all look so 
scarily similar. I mean, of course, there's, you know, slight variances in their blade shapes and maybe their blade material, but I mean, realistically looking at most of these knives, kind of minus the star pattern on this guy, um, you know, realistically, they all look the same. And honestly, that's because there's only so many ways you can make uh, titanium and steel look different. But when you sit there and you look at these knives, they all look radically similar. Um, just throwing it out there, you know, this is the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. And if I set this in the lineup, you know, this looks radically different than everything else here. And so I'm not saying that everyone should go copy the compression lock. And obviously there are titanium handled um, Paramilitary 2s that would probably blend right into this lineup. But you just look at these guys and they're all really, really similar. You know, they look very much the same knife. And uh, that's kind of unfortunate because it's like, you know, when you get to that point in the knife collecting community, if you get to that point in the knife collecting community where you do want to hunker down and buy maybe some grail knives or some knives that you've really desired or are just higher end, you know, to once again deliver higher performance, um, you know, you're left with essentially going with a titanium frame lock. And I think that it would be really cool to see the knife community adapt to using other forms of locks and not just give in to this idea that the only high quality or if you want a high quality knife it must be a titanium frame lock there are plenty of other really solid locking options once again i keep rolling in this compression lock because i just so happen to have my paramilitary 2 in my pocket today but um yeah, I, I, like I said, this doesn't take away from the fact that some of my favorite knives like this Hinder XM18 are still very much, you know, my favorite knives. I really do love this Nkosi. My Skirmish is one of my grail knives, was for a very long time. It's just, once again, especially when you sit down and having all these knives out together, you really got, you get to look and you're just like, man, they all look so similar. You know, they all feel so similar and Part of that's good, but part of that's also not so good. You kind of wish there would be a little bit more variance within these blades, you know. But anyways, guys, that's kind of a, a rant that I kind of wanted to extend out, kind of flesh out, because in that video, um, you know, I, I brought up multiple different points, but I think some of those points are worth really going over um, more in depth. And part of that is for the community, like the people that are interested in knife collecting that watch the channel, but also for the people who I know uh, watch the channel who make knives. You know, I know that there are a handful of knife makers that watch my channel and I try to throw these videos out to give them some input from the community to say, hey, you know, if you're thinking about building a folder, you know, that's awesome. I definitely recommend it. But, you know, try not to just follow this mantra of high quality must equal titanium frame lock. You know, if you want to charge more than $200, you must have a titanium frame lock, whether it's a flipper or just a folder. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.